Here we are once again on The Process. I'm Cassidy Linder, and today I'm happy to present Andrew Calder. Welcome. Mm, it's my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. This is very, very cool that you guys are doing. I love it. Thank you. We, we truly appreciate you being a part of it. Absolutely. So just tell us who you are. Yeah, the question. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what I did today. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, from a very young age, um, was very independent and spent a lot of time in solitude, alone, and um, with creative things. And uh, um, I took my mother's camera at a very young age, and it wasn't good enough, and I had a paper route. And I was, uh, I would do that very early, every morning. Mm -hmm. And I made very little money doing that. I was supposed to save that for college, but instead I went out and I bought a camera. Nice. And I didn't tell my family. And I hid that for years. Wow. Eventually, I, you know, it was abstract shots, and then it was long telephoto shots of the family. And eventually I copped to it, like, okay, I have a camera. Mm -hmm. So there, that, to me, the camera was a tool for that I noticed that I... It would make my observation of things much more acute. It would turn up the dial. Mm. And it gave me a certain confidence in interacting with people. Mm. And I would take portraits in a way that I thought penetrated a deeper sense of that person and that I would engage in a dialogue. And for me, I think it was a crutch to have that dialogue. Hmm. And and because I wanted to know the truth about everything and truth about who you are, that um, to get there, to engage at that level, the camera was almost incidental. I would just sit that here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then every little while when I sensed that we were in a place that was deeply real, mm -hmm. I could see something, it seemed so beautiful at that place. And so that's how I did it. And I wasn't obsessed with the technology so much as the humanity mm -hmm. and, the, and the deeper part. So that was my early um, bit of, I think, just being different from what my family expected of me. And uh, I drew in class. I found school excruciating, and so I would draw endlessly. Mm -hmm. And then I would kind of get all my homework done, like in a blast at, in the bathroom floor, and then just <laughs> I'd be ahead in school so I could really just not pay attention while in class. Was there something specific you would draw? Specifically, I, I did draw an enormous number of these vehicles that were sort of like a hybrid between um, a high performance and extraordinary engines, but then there was a whole area with which I could live in it as well. Hmm. So there were like these inventions that were like rapidly moving homes. Hmm. And there was this sense in my house that like I had moved out at six years old, but I couldn't leave. Okay. But I think emotionally and psychologically, I had left my house. Okay. And I kind of made my own breakfast and fend it for myself. Sure. And uh, and then it, certainly in my imaginary world, I was gone, and I didn't share that with my family. Mm -hmm. And of I course, tend to I struggle with that, even sharing anything that I do. It's a beautiful, fertile, imaginary world with which I draw or I write and I write stories and I constantly do it. Mm 